What up, everybody? I'm Dave Miranda, and this is episode 61 of Just Give Me Five. I hope you guys are doing great, continue to be amazing. We've got a really, really awesome show lined up for you today. But if you guys caught episode 60, you saw we had none other than the one and only Lady La. And let me tell you, was that inspiring or what? I mean, you know, you talk about girl power and just like, you know, being in a straight go-getter, you know, no excuses. She is a prime example of that, of all of that. And, um, you know, like I really learned a lot from her that day. It's crazy because out of all of our years, you know, being in the scene, the industry, we had never met until that day. You know what I mean? And um, so I really learned a lot from her, um, gained a lot of knowledge, gained a lot of inspiration. And, uh, you know, I just, it was great, man. You know, so make sure you guys watch episode 60. And shout out to you, Lady La. All right. But today's guest is someone who is responsible for so many careers in the industry. We're going to talk about her early days in radio, starting the Flavor Unit with Little Sean. We're also going to talk about how she got Willie North Pole as Disturbing the Peace Deal. We're going to talk about some of the clients she's managed. Also going to talk about her label, Taste, and much, much more. So ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, I present to you, Tiffany J. Hey, I'm Tiffany J, and all I'm saying is just give me five. Uh, it was an accident. I accidentally got into radio. Um, I was in beauty school, and I thought I was gonna own beauty shops. I thought that was my goal in life. Yeah. And I called the radio station and I won some tickets. There was a guy named Julie, Julian Allison on the radio. And I called him and he was like, we're talking. And he was like, yeah, come get your tickets, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, hey, he's like, you know, you have a good voice for radio. And I was like, thanks. He was like, you want to do radio? And I was like, okay. Right. <laughs> and I, like, first of all, I was like, what does this guy want? And he was like, no, seriously. Right. He's like, I'll teach you how to do radio. Uh -huh. He was like, start coming up here while I'm doing overnights, because he was on overnights. He was like, I'll teach you how to run the board and everything. So when you apply, you kind of are a little bit ahead because you know how to run a board. Okay. And yeah. so I started coming up there and he really started mentoring me and like how to do breaks, how to do drops, how to do stops and all that stuff. Right. And so then I'd say maybe like two months, a month later, I put an application at the promotion department and and I got hired, and then four months later, I was just walking down the hallway, and Mark Medina was like, hey, what are you doing this weekend? I was like, nothing. Wow. And he was like, um, you wanna be on the radio? I was yeah. like, okay, sure. Right. Not and in the back of my head, knowing I had already been kind of getting ready for this, yeah. and I was on the radio. Mark Medina, man, mm -hmm. Medina in the morning, right? Yeah, no, it wasn't even, it was the Madhouse. The Madhouse. Yeah, yeah, so they were like nights. That's right. And Sean was part of their crew. Yep. yep, and then I started doing overnights and I started filling in for other people and then me and Ms. Dre had a show and that's how I got really all the way into the entertainment business. And then you started working with the Flavor Unit, right? With, yep, with yep. So then at the time, because Power 106 was our sister station okay. and they had the Flavor Unit, so then uh, Bruce St. James was like, well, we should have a Flavor Unit, right. but we didn't really know what we were doing. Bruce so. Right. Yeah. So he kind of knew their blueprint. And right. so he was like, we got a van, we got a wrap. And he was like, just go places and do call-ins. And I was like, okay. And at the time I knew a lot of people that had like stores and stuff like that. So I'd pull up on my homies like, oh yeah, I'm on the corner of 7th Street Rosier right now. Yeah. And later, all of that is worth money, right? But at the time I didn't know. So we would just, I was just trying to help my friends. Yeah. Really, you know what I mean? So right. I would go to their places. North Pole was like a story being written probably before I even knew it was written. So me and Willie, or Little Bill, he's gonna hate that I said that, but Little okay, Bill, yeah. we were childhood friends from we were like 10. Okay. We used to go to summer camp together as kids, right? Okay. He has a huge, a huge family. So his whole family would always be at all the summer camps. We used to chase each other. They used to call me names. We used to call each other names, fight, all of that stuff, right? right? So fast forward to me really being on the radio, getting in the music business. Yeah. And now I'm like, okay, I want to make some moves because I appreciate being on the radio, but being in Phoenix, it felt like I only mattered in Phoenix. And I just wanted to do something bigger than Phoenix, you know, right, right, where I was right. actually in the music business, not just people coming to visit. Yeah. And so then um, I was moving around on tour, right? And I was on a chicken and beer tour, and at the time I was managing Nocturnal, okay. 
when we had a really huge record called Super Ugly, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So we were out on tour, but obviously it was Chicken and Beer, so it was Ludacris' tour. Right. So it was us, um, David Banner, T.I., all of us were all on tour. You know, we had tour buses, whatever, but everybody kind of created a bond. You know, we yeah. created friendships, and we would crisscross over, because on that tour, we got along. Back in the day, a lot of people were fighting stuff on tour, but we right. all got along. Oh, so, cool. exactly. So, we got along, and so later on, I got cool with a dude named Corey Digga that worked there. I got really cool with Shaka, with Shaka, Jeff Dixon, yeah. all of them, even Luda, right? I was yeah. one of the first people that brought Luda out to Phoenix when I was doing stuff with, um, Urban AZ, because I used to be oh, the general okay. manager of Urban AZ also. Nice. So I was doing concerts and I was at the station. But again, I just felt like I was just dropped in this Phoenix bubble. Yeah. And I just wanted to matter in the entire music business. Right. Like I wanted to put Arizona in the music business instead of feeling like the music business kept coming to Arizona. Okay, yeah. Does that make yeah, sense? Exactly. And so that was like my goal. And I really wanted somebody from Arizona to make it. So my friends at home kept telling me, this is ours named Willie Norpool, Willie Norpool. And I'm like, Okay, great, good for him. You know what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm not thinking about oh, no Eric. I didn't know it was him. I didn't know it was oh, him. Okay. Right? And people kept telling me, like, you've got to check out Willie Dorfel. And I was like, no, 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 thank you. You know, I was like, I want to go out here and get in the game, and then I'll represent Arizona no matter where I go. Yeah. And so somebody sent me a video of, of it wasn't body marked up because we did body marked up. Yeah, but somebody yeah. sent me a video, and I watched the video, and I was like, I don't know who Willie Northpole is. I was like, but Little Bill's definitely in this video. <laughs> right. And it literally was like, you know that moment on Ace Ventura when he's like, Einhorn is Finkel, Finkel yeah, is yeah, Einhorn. Right, and I'm right, like, right, right, right. wait, Willie Northpole <laughs> is Little Bill? Right. So I got his number, I called him, and I'm like, are, are you Willie Northpole? And he was like, yeah, I'm Willie Northpole, Tiffany. I was like, get out of here. And I was like, well, listen, I'm going to Atlanta. I was like, I want to really figure out how to get in with some people, how to do some stuff. But like, yeah. let's figure out how to get you out here trying to do something, right? Yeah. At the time, he was with Hot Rod. Hot Rod, yeah. Hot Rod, and yeah. they were actually living at 50's house. Yeah. Right? Hot Rod had right, movie. right. Yeah. And it was a whole thing where 50 was like, oh, he's going to sign everybody, and yeah. it was going to be this whole Arizona movement and all that, right? So I got down to Atlanta. I had gave my friend Cord Digga body marked up because the song was already made, and um, he would just play it over and over and over at his desk. And he was like, I'm going to get somebody to want the record. Watch, I'm going to get somebody to get into it. And one day, Jeff Dixon, who is Shaka Zulu's brother, okay. walked by the desk and was like, who is that? And he was like, this is a kid named Willie Norpole. Well, I had been coming up to the office. He's like, yeah, you know the girl Tiffany? You know, yeah. she manages Bangladesh, and she manages the heat makers. Like, I had a lot of producers at the time. Yeah. He was like, yeah, yeah, Willie Norpole, that's her people. So he was at 50's house. And I called him, and I was like, I need you to leave. And he was like, what do you mean? I was like, I need you to leave, and I need you to come and meet with them and see if we could do a deal at DTP. He was like, you want me to leave 50 Cent's house? to see if I could do a deal with Luda. I said, listen, I said, in the end of the day, you're just gonna be somebody else on G Unit. That's all it was, you know what I'm saying? I'm yeah. like, and there's already the game, there's already all these other people and Hot Rod. Yeah. I was like, so the reality of you being able to really step out and be your own and represent like we want to isn't really gonna happen. So what do you think? It took a little convincing. And he was like, all right, I'll come. And so the, I remember the day he came to do the meeting, they lost his luggage. Okay. And so we're sitting at the baggage claim like, we don't have any luggage. We don't have no fly outfits to wear. We have to hurry up and go to the meeting. We ended up going to the hotel, meeting with Shaka and Jeff. They were so impressed. They loved him. They were like, let's do the deal. And we did the deal. And then we ended up, because they were with Def Jam, then we ended up being DTP Def Jam. So that's how we ended up in that situation. So Body Marked Up was a great story. We had shot some of Body Marked Up with zero budget at my best friend's house. It was hilarious. So like we had a room, like when you see the guys with their shirts off in the video, yeah. we had an oil room where we would bring all the guys with tattoos and it was me and my girlfriend's jobs. We oiled everybody down and we're literally at my girlfriend's house doing this, but we needed a house, you know what yeah. I'm saying? So she was like, yeah, for sure, whatever, right. right? So then once we got signed, we knew we had to make it even more interesting. So we were like, okay, what can we do? We were like, let's bring Ludacris to the South Side, but we can't tell anybody we're bringing Ludacris to the South Side. So we called a bunch of car clubs, and really what we did was we used the cars as a barrier, okay. and we had Luda sitting over in like a van. Nobody knew he was in there. We're getting everybody hyped up. You know, Willie's doing his verse, da 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 And we're everybody, like, we had a signal, and we gave the signal. Ludacris just popped out of the car and came and got in the middle, and everybody lost their mind. Like, the look on everybody's face was real. 
because That's nobody knew he was there. And they were right. like, you got Ludacris in the middle of South Phoenix? Yeah, but that was the thing for like Willie and like, I'm not from South Phoenix, I'm from the West Side. So like I went to Trevor Brown, but for Willie and like my dad being from the South Side, it mattered to us for people to see what it was because everybody thinks that Arizona Scottsdale for some reason, right? They don't know that we have layers and minorities and colors and our own thing here, our own culture, right? Yeah. Even though people don't get it. So for us, that meant a lot to have Ludacris in the middle of the hood doing Body Marked Up. So that was definitely memorable. So artists I've managed, and forgive me if I forget some because it's been like 23, 24 years. So I've been managing artists for a long time. Wow. Um, I managed local artists, right? I started off local artists. So I managed Buki, and I managed Willie. I used to manage Mo so you from Big Five. Buki when he had the stress in album? Yeah, Survivalist. Yeah, all of that stuff. That's right. Cool. That's really where, like, thank goodness those people trusted me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Enough. And I really didn't know how to be a manager. They just knew I was on the radio, so I had to have some better connections than the homie down the street. You know what I'm saying? So they're like, you gotta, you know somebody. <laughs> All right, you know somebody. So, so that, you know, I kind of started there and then I started working with Petey Pablo was probably the first artist that I worked with, right? Okay. On the level of like being major. Yeah. And that's when we had Freak League. So I went yeah. out with him, I did assistant work for him. Then I started going out on the road. And then right after that, I went into Nocturnal. Right. And so then I was, I was working with Nocturnal. That's when I really made the decision to move to LA. Cause I was like, I was doing the t every two weeks. Phoenix, LA. Phoenix, Nocturnal LA. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, super, super ugly. Like we would have to perform that song like four or five times a night. Because that was off the, the wash. Yes. Yeah, yes. Okay. Okay. Which is crazy because I used to do street team promotions and I had did all the promo for the wash. Oh wow. Because I used to have a really huge street team out here. Yeah. So I used to do all that's how I really like I said, I, I was doing so many different things here. I was like, what else is there to do? You know what I mean? Right. I got I gotta raise it up to another level. So once I started working with Knock, then it was just like more and more people started coming to me, but I really yeah. needed to go back to the basics. Yeah. And that's when I started managing songwriters and producers and okay. DJs. So like I managed Chingy's DJ, okay. the Heat Makers, the Track Stars, you know what I mean? People like wow. that, Rico Love, Bangladesh, Easy LP. So as, that's how I really started learning the fundamentals of management. Because artist management and, creative man and managing creative people is different. You know what I mean? When you're talking about an artist, you have to really deal with the whole spectrum of right. everything that happens with them, from the label to the lawyer to the publisher to the this. And I just didn't have that exposure being here. You know what I'm saying? So that's when I kind of took it back and started working on the creatives. Yeah. And then as I was working on the creatives, you know, people were constantly bringing me people. Yeah. Like my friend um, Memph Hits was working at, what label was that? at Jive, at right? Jive, okay. And because I was working with Petey Pablo, I kind of was around because he was on Jive as yeah, well, sure. right? And so we had made friends, we got really cool, and later he was like, hey, I got this artist named Huey, he's got this record called Pop, Lock, and Drop It, it's really starting to blow up in St. Louis, yeah. but the world hasn't heard it, what do you think? You know what I'm saying? So I was like, okay, yes, sir. <laughs> we got a special guest right here. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I saw him at the corner of my eye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, hopefully we get him on camera. He's chilling. He's like, I, he got, he like, I got him. He was like, just so you know I'm here. Just so y'all you know. So you know I'm here. It's my That's pond. It. It's it. my pond. Nobody got permission to, to tape right. in my pond. He's good, man. He's chilling. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so he had this record called Pop, Lock, and Drop It. Yeah. And so at that time, I was ready to move to Atlanta and really dive all the way in. Yeah. And um, so... He, then Huey came to Atlanta, okay. and that was really the pop, block, and drop it era, right? It was a huge record. It was Hell great yeah. for us, you know what I'm saying, yeah. at the time. And then also at the time I had Bangladesh. Nice. And so while I was managing Bangladesh, we had this quick story. We had this record. He had a group called Charlie McEnroe, right? That was the name of his group. What was it called? Charlie McEnroe, okay. right? Okay. That was the name of his, I think it was called Charlie McEnroe, yeah. Charlie Mack Rowe, okay. right, and they had this beat that was crazy. Everybody wanted the beat, but he was like, this is for them. So they had it, we had it up on MySpace, the whole thing, right? It wasn't going anywhere because they were a new group. So he had a friend that was working with Wayne, and we ended up putting the beat on a CD. Yeah. So he gives her the beat CD or whatever. He hits me like, hey, they say Wayne made a record to my group's beat. And he was like, but I don't want to sell it. And I was like, yeah, but it's a little Wayne. I was like, this might 
be life changing. Like who knows? You know what right. I'm saying? What might happen? Right. So at the time, I've got Rico Love, I got Bangladesh, I've got Willie. K. Michelle is kind of starting to come around a little bit because right. one of my friends is working with her, and like again, I'm just a girl from Arizona that didn't have like training on how to be a manager. Yeah. So I'm kind of like figuring it out. And so we end up um, getting a version of this record. And Wayne's just going crazy on it. He's just going crazy. And, and a whole bunch of time he kept saying, I'm a millionaire, I'm a millionaire, I'm a millionaire. And so um, Bang was mad. And he was like, I want, I want my beat back. So at this point, Baby had wrote us a check. Okay. And he hadn't cashed the check. And I was like, OK. He was like, go to Baby and go and get my beat back and give him his money, give him yeah. this check. And I was like, all right. But in my head, I was like, something's telling me don't do that. Yeah. So I put the check in my drawer, and I didn't do it. So then he, it kind of got back to me, like, yo, the producer wants you to really work on the song. Yeah. Fast forward to, he sends it back, and it's a milli. Wow. And then we're like, I said, no, see? He was like, what would you do with the check? I was like, oh, it's at the house. I didn't, I didn't give him the check. Right, right. <laughs> I didn't give him the check. I told you I thought this record was going to change your life. Yeah. And so fast forward, it ends up becoming the biggest record of the year. And then I have Huey pop, lock, and drop it, and all of that stuff is going on. And at the same time, we're really trying to cultivate Willie's thing. You know what yeah, I mean? And really yeah. trying to get Willie where he's got to go. And then I meet this girl named Kay Michelle, right. who my friend's managing. And he says, hey, I think she needs a little bit of a woman's touch. I have Rico Love. I just have so much going on. Okay. But all I wanted to do, I really wanted to see Willie win. Absolutely. Like, that almost mattered to me more than anything else because it was like a win for home. Absolutely. You know what I mean? This guy's got history. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Everybody else, you know, managers get fired every day. People don't care about right, us. Right. So it was like, I'm not, I'm, I'd rather give up my sleep, you know, and everything else. My son was really young at the time, so I'd rather give all that up to do that. Um, and so from there, I just kind of hyper-focused. Okay. You know what I mean? I really hyper-focused. I dropped some more of the producers and, and pulled back a little bit. And then I started really focusing on K. Michelle. And then Memph Hits ended up signing K. Michelle. Okay. So then that kind of started moving. And then around then, my friend was managing Young Berg. Wow. And he called me and he was like, what do you think of Young Berg? And I was like, Young Berg's the guy to be fighting. And he was like, right, yeah, yeah I'm back. that's all I knew. And he was just like, no, he was like, he's a really, he's a really talented songwriter and producer. Yeah. He's like, people just won't give him a chance. Yeah. And I was like, all right, I said, listen, if he'll, if he'll listen, cool, I'll do it. So I working with him. My friend that brought me in ended up getting murdered. Oh, wow. So when he got murdered, me and Berg had kind of went on a hiatus. We weren't speaking for a minute. He ended up calling me to tell me that, he, wow. that my friend got murdered. And so when he told me how they found him and all that stuff, he was like, you know, Cam would want us to figure this shit out. You know what I'm saying? Like, he yeah. would want us to figure this out. Right. And I was like, are right, you right? I said, listen, I said, if you're going to listen to me and do what I say, I'm cool. I was like, but you got to trust me. Like, I know people done you wrong, but you got to trust me. And he's like, all right, what do I need? I said, you need to change your name. I was like, we're going to send records out. I was like, I work with all these different famous producers. Yeah. I'm going to start giving you beats. We're going to send these records out. I was like, people aren't even going to know it too. By the time they figure out it too, it's going to be too late. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah. from there, we really, really started focusing. And then I was like, all right, we got to go to L.A. Because now it's time to make that transition. A lot of Atlanta has started changing. Yeah. And I was like, it's time for me to go to L.A. So when I came to L.A., then somebody introduced me to Ty Dolla Sign. And then when they introduced me to Ty Dolla Sign, he was just in the very beginning. Like, if you go back and watch any of the videos from the first Beach House, like my cabana and all that, we shot those like at his house. Wow. You know what I mean? Like we were, we're just, yeah, we were on the come up. And yeah. we didn't have, you know, we didn't even have a deal at Atlantic or anything yet. Yeah. So I was doing that, working on Burke at the same time. I had ended up coming back and forth managing Kay Michelle a few different times in her life. Wow. You know what I mean? In her career. Um, and then... I pulled back a little bit off of songwriters and producers yeah. a little more because an artist takes a lot of focus. You know, you have to really work on every part of what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And um, I had, was doing some stuff on the side for a label in Atlanta called Big Cat Records. Okay. And they had an artists named Gucci Man. And I had producers and blah, 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 blah. Nice. Fast forward to me and Gucci Man sitting in the studio one night. He was the last person I worked with that night. And he was like, you get to play me three beats. And I was like, three? He was like, three beats. Yeah. I paid him one beat from EZLP, and I paid him this other beat from Cybersap. So when I played the beat, he was like, hold on. He was like, play that one Rick James song. And I was like, what song? He was like, very freaky girl, remember the song? And I was yeah. like, the song, what kind of song? So we play it. Two seconds later, he goes in. We made Freaky Girl that night. Wow. All this is just happening. On the spot. On the spot. All this is happening in my life all at one time. <laughs> and I'm just like, this is a lot, but I got to go to L.A. Right. I got to make it happen. I got to I got to grow. You know what I mean? I got to yeah, keep yeah, growing. Yeah. So I started managing Ty. Then Berg started really blowing up because people really literally didn't know Hitmaker was Young Berg. Yeah. 
All right. Yeah. Nobody knew. Like, right. nobody knew. And then we were on, I don't know, third album of K. Michelle. Okay. And then I met my partner. So then my partner had Wale and had Karen Civil. And I had K. Michelle and I had Hitmaker. And so we decided to put our company together. Yeah. And then when we put our company together, it kind of made us a force because we had really powerful urban acts. You know yeah. what I'm saying? That were kind of really doing their thing. So that's kind of like the short of my management story. I'm sure I forgot a whole bunch of people that I've managed, but those were like the highlights. Kind of like I, I guess I was explaining earlier, when me and my partner came together, right? We both have been managers for many, many years, right? And so us knowing that, like I said before, managers get forgotten. And we were like, we want to... Oh, this show. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> Thanks for this show. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, like for us, managers get forgotten, right? right. right? And, and your artist loves you as long as you're doing everything they want. And the moment it's not, you're, they're on to the next, the next manager. Absolutely. And so us both being in it 20 plus years, we were like, all right, what are we going to do that's almost going to be our legacy? Right. You know, what are we going to own? What's going to be our thing? And so that's how we really came up with Taste, okay. right? Yeah. Um, and then we came up with a management company called Meshack as well. Okay. So a lot of our artists' management side are on Meshack, but it, our goal really was to make something bigger than us, right? Yeah. So we started off with Taste Radio. It's crazy. So Mikey Mike yeah, yeah. is who runs Dash, right? He's like right under, under right. DJ Ski. So, you right. know, I know Mikey from power oh, cool. because we all work together and you know I know his brothers Verman was our DJ when I was on the road with Nocturnal nice. so it's all you know we've always been really cool with each other close throughout yeah. in throughout the years Absolutely. so Mikey being over there he knowing that you know I have the background in radio but Reggie Hawkins is really he's really the leader of the ship for our radio station nice. so he was one of the original PDs that really helped start Sirius satellite like he was really out there programming those stations and getting a lot of attention on a lot of those stations okay. so we brought him over to program our station right and then as we were doing that we started working on that then we started signing artists to our label as well yeah. all while doing management as well but again we were just thinking of the long road like I don't want to be the gray hair manager right, right, you know what right, I mean right, like yeah. I want I want to have something else to do and I have a granddaughter now so oh, now wow, I'm yeah. thinking I'm thinking a little bit longer For sure. you know what I'm saying and so um the radio station has been, it's been a labor of love. It's taken us two years to really get to this point that we're at, but we're now a media-based station. We report to media base. Nice. We're getting great interviews. We're really based in New York. Most of our guys are, oh, okay. um, except for DJ Mill, who obviously is LeBron's DJ and he's from the Midwest. And so he kind of brings that Midwest flavor to it. Right. But like, you know, for different like BET awards and stuff like that, we go to Dash and we, we have a broadcast straight from the window. You know what I mean? And different celebrities come by and do stuff with us. And so we just tied that together with our label, which is also called Taste. And we have three Midwest artists on our label. We have an artist named Little Cray. We have an artist named Luis Armando, who's also in a deal with us. And then we did a deal with Cash Money. Okay. So he's their first Latino artist. Wow. And then we have an artist named Love Frank, who's from Detroit, nice. who's kind of like, um, I don't know, how we explain him? <laughs> kind of Mac Miller kind of vibe, if that oh, makes okay. sense. Like yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. Super cool kid. Yeah. Um, and so that's our, I don't want to say that's our into the sunset plan, but as we start to feel ourselves not want to chase artists around anymore, yeah. our record label and our radio station is really what matters to us. So on our station, our station is very much a focus for us, right? We're on the dash, under the dash umbrella, right? We're one of the very few stations that is media-based because a lot of them aren't, and they're doing like 17 million listeners a day. Wow. So we're really pushing and striving. And for me, because I come from radio, yep. it still feels a certain way to me. I feel happy about being able to say that I own a radio station. Absolutely. Nobody's ever asked me that before. <laughs> That's why we <we're> <laughs> um, I think it's an honor, okay. right? I think it's, um, it gives you a sense of responsibility and making sure that whatever I do, that I leave something for the other people that come behind me. Yeah. So that maybe it's a little bit easier or maybe I just left a little bit of instructions. Right. You know what I mean? Of what to and what not to do. Right. You know what I mean? Or at least when you something happens, how to deal with it. Absolutely. You know, because like I said, when I got in this, I was just a girl from Arizona that went to Trevor Brown that thought I was going to own beauty shops. Right. You know what I mean? And here I am with no like formal college degree or anything else like that, right. being able to do all of this stuff in the music industry. So... I guess it's blessed. That's all I can say. It's blessed.
First of all, I gotta shout out Maryville because that's the area I'm from. So everybody that went to Trevor Brown or lived over there in the 67th and 75th Avenues, that's where it all started from. Um, and then everybody that I've worked with here, you know what I'm saying, that's trusted me from, from Buki to, you know, my friends from Camp, Quasi, you know what I mean, from, of course, Little Bill, Willie North Paul, you know what I mean, from anybody else that's trusted me to work with them. Big Phrase, you know what I mean, Big Mo, a lot of the artists that were here that gave me opportunity, and then my team that came from Power 92, right? So I appreciate Bruce St. James and, and Mark Medina and Little Sean for showing me the ropes and showing me how to do stuff. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And Crazy Kid in the Wake Up Show and Joey Boy and all of them that just, we all, it's crazy to this day, we still have a great like kinship. Yeah. We're all friends on Facebook and we're all always watching each other's kids grow up. Right. So that's really cool. Um, um, shout out to my whole family, obviously the Johnson, my Mozzie family, for always holding me down, for watching my son while I was out on tour, while I was out doing things, making sure that I could end up being who I ended up being today. Um, and then to all the artists that have trusted me with their career. Shout out to my partner, Leonard Brooks, because obviously we're about to make history now yes, with sir. everything we're doing. I feel like I had to work up to get here. And um, shout out to you, Dave. And my most special shout out is to my son, Jalen, AKA the Bluefish Hotel. My son is an amazing artist. He paints, he does custom artwork. My nice. son's painted water towers. So shout out okay. to my son and a shout out to my granddaughter, Nayeli. She's a little artist in the making as well. And that's my time, people. Thanks for giving me five. And there you have it. Man, nothing but love and respect to Tiffany J, man. That woman inspires the hell out of me, yo. You know what I mean? She's fearless, full of drive, ambition, and like nothing can stop her. You know what I'm saying? And this is a real treat. Been trying to do this for a while. Finally, we were able to make it happen. So nothing but love and respect to you, Tiffany. And uh, make sure you guys are following her on social media. A shout out to my brother, Jimmy Nelson, on the camera. Make sure you guys subscribe to the YouTube channel. Tell a friend to tell a friend. The numbers are going up. The numbers are going up. And if you guys feel like donating to the show, go ahead and hit the Cash App as well. All right, man. Well, this was definitely one for the books. I hope you guys enjoyed this as much as I did. And uh, till next time, stay tuned, stay blessed, stay healthy, and just give me five, y'all.